What's up guys, Riley here from RP Productions, and today I'm doing a review over the Vantru OnDash R2 dash cam. Uh, now I made a vlog about last, about last week, uh, saying why I finally was pushed over the edge to buy one of these. Uh, but basically having a dash cam on your car is just something great to have, uh, whether it be for if you get in a car accident, you can prove to insurance that you know it wasn't your fault, or whatever the case is, or if you catch another person's accident on film, uh, you know, you can help them out. Or if you just catch something absolutely crazy that happens, let's say you know a meteor strikes right in front of you while you're driving, you got it on film, and then you know you can post it to YouTube or do whatever you want with that. So uh, many different uses. I'm mainly doing it for security reasons because it's just I don't know. People are crazy. It's that's just what it comes down to. So I uh, there's many different dash cams that you can go with when you're looking online. Uh, I ended up choosing the Vantru. Uh, really no reason why, I just thought it looked the best. I, uh, I liked all the features that it comes with. I also bought a 64 gigabyte uh, SanDisk micro SD card. And so between the two of these, I should be able to hold about nine and a half, give or take, hours of HD video. So that's quite a lot. But um, you know, enough of me talking, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. I got my uh, trusty knife here. Um, let's pick a spot. All right, perfect. So, uh, you know, like I said, no real reason for going with this other than I thought it looked pretty good. I was going to buy the R1 and then I figured out they have an R2, so I went ahead and bought the R2 because it's a little bit better quality and a little bit easier to use. So I'm going to switch the camera over here so you see what I'm seeing and we'll open this bad boy up and see what's inside. All right, so here's what the box looks like a little bit closer up. Um, you know, pretty cool. It's touch screen on the back and, um, you know, really just a lot of cool features. Here's all the... Uh, the stuff on the side, if you wanted to check all of that out, all the stuff that it does. But enough of that, let's go ahead and open this sucker up and see what we can find. So, uh, the dash cam, or the manual, thank you for spending money to our company. And aha, here's what I was looking for. Okay, so here's the dash cam. Now, this is actually a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. This is, uh, huh. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab my GoPro just for comparison size and we'll see what the difference is. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed my GoPro and I went ahead and grabbed my iPhone. So this is the size of the dash cam, this is the size of the GoPro. Now everybody knows GoPros are, you know, tiny and so that's the relation there. Um, but as far as the width goes, they're really about the same. Now if I pull out my iPhone 6 here, iPhone is much bigger, so you know, smaller than an iPhone, um, definitely. A lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. It looked kind of big in pictures and I was a little bit worried about that, but um, initial impressions, it looks to be like it's made of pretty high quality. You got a power button, a uh, photo button up here, so if you see something crazy, you can take a picture of it with just the press of a button. And then coming around to the back side, you have an OK, uh, I guess an um, M for probably menu, and then like an up and down scroll over here on the side. Um, so, you know, right off the bat, it looks like a pretty high quality dash cam. Um, really anxious to see how this thing works and what kind of video results we can get out of it. Um, woo, almost dropped it day one, that's embarrassing. So that's enough of looking at that. Let's see what else they got in this box. Um, you know, they packed this thing pretty well. Honestly, I'm impressed with that. Um, so right here, we have the actual cable itself. Now, this is one of the really cool features about this thing that sent me to buy it. So this is what you're gonna plug into your cigarette lighter, your 12 volt. Um, and this is freaking awesome. So you can move this out of the way and you still retain a USB charging port um, via the 12 volt plug in your vehicle. So you don't just have to sacrifice losing out on that plug while your dash cam's plugged in. You actually have something that can be uh, used. And now this cord, I'm not gonna unwind it yet, but it's extremely long. I don't know the distance, but I'm pretty sure you could probably fit this thing just about anywhere in any vehicle and you'd have plenty of cord left over. Um, so now we're gonna move on to the uh, suction cup and now the cool thing about this dash cam is actually the suction cup has these little metal prongs on the top which I'm actually going to plug in uh, to the dash cam so when it's hanging upside down I guess it'll end up looking something like this so it hangs upside down um, but the metal prongs plug in from via the camera and then the actual suction cup mount itself it's not like you just plug in a cord uh, you plug in the cord to the suction cup mount right there in that little spot right there. So pretty anxious to set all that up in the car. Uh, right here we have the USB um, to mini USB or micro. I'm not sure which one it is, but 
Uh, more than likely this is to get your files off the camera. I could be totally wrong. Maybe it just requires you to take out the SD card. Maybe they give you the option to do both. And here looks like an HDMI cable so you can plug it into a TV or whatever and watch your stuff there. So that is all that's in the box. And um, you know, pretty well packed. I'm, I'm pretty impressed already. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set all this stuff up in my car and we'll go do some road test, road testing, I guess. And we'll see how the quality is and we'll compare it to the uh, quality of a GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition. So let's go do that. Okay, so originally I had filmed this video showing off the different recording uh, settings and system setups and everything like that, but it's honestly very self-explanatory. And if you buy one of these dash cams for yourself, you can figure it out quite easily. But I'll be recording these videos in 1080, uh, 30 frames a second in the HDR mode, which is basically the highest resolution you can do. All right, so this is how I have chose to run mine. Uh, as you can see, I've got it hidden back there behind that mirror. Uh, and then the cord goes kind of like through the headliner, uh, down through this thing. Oh, come on, focus for me. There we go. Uh, so it goes down through there. Um, you just kind of shove it in with your fingers. You don't really have to use any type of like tape or anything. But uh, anyway, so it comes down over here, kind of goes through the door jam, and then uh, I have it actually routed underneath the floor mat. And then it keeps coming over here, and if it will focus, um, and then you know the cord gets routed in through here. Now, one thing about Dodge chargers, now every car is different, um, but this 12 volt in here is, I guess, what you'd call a live 12 volt. So if I sit here and plug it in, the light turns on while the car is off, and there you go, you hear the, the camera start up. So really, if I wanted to, I could put it in parking mode where it has like a motion sensing. Um, feature where like it detects motion will start recording and then stop and it it kind of does that stuff on its own uh, but as you can see it, this is going off the car's battery so now many people worry you know will this drain my car's battery well if you have it on parking mode um and you know you drive your car every day it shouldn't be too big of a problem but if you let leave your car sitting uh for a few days i would not recommend doing that um for me i think i'm what i'm going to do is probably have it plugged in all day during the day uh, but an overnight I'll probably leave it unplugged now there's also a 12 volt uh, outlet right up here where my finger is uh, now you might be asking why am I not using that one because if I plug this in whoops there it goes it's turned off now see so, you know if I plug this in the light does not turn on because that is I guess not a live <clears throat> live 12 volt uh, and also because I this is where I plug in my radar detector when I'm driving so I get the best of both worlds I can have my radar detector plugged in there and then plug this in whenever I want uh, to that 12 volt back there um, so you know kind of cool but um, you know the parking mode I think there's so many different ways that you can set that up you can have a, a trickle charge um, thing where basically if your battery gets too low it'll automatically shut it off uh, there's a lot of different routes you can go with this but this is just what I'm choosing to do and so you know it actually is pretty hidden honestly uh, so if you get up a little bit closer you can definitely see it there but where I have it now it's placed you know uh, excuse the wind sorry about that but you know I have it placed right where your normal uh, mirror would be so I think a lot of people wouldn't really notice it uh, and, you know, and if somebody was trying to, you know, jack with your car or something, I think that they would notice it because, you know, if you're really going to take the um, liberty of messing with someone's car, I think you would probably look to see if they have a camera. I don't know. People are crazy. But that is what it looks like in there, just, just chilling. And so from far away, you don't really notice it. Uh, in person, it, it kind of sticks out. I believe if you wanted to, you know, take the super safe route, you could probably black out all the chrome and the letters and stuff and just have it completely black in there. But... I think that it's hidden pretty well, so let's go ahead and take it for a little road test and see how the quality is. Alright guys, so here we are driving down a road in the daylight, a little bit cloudy outside, but as you can tell it does a pretty darn good job of showing off some nice color. Um, I'm really happy with how this looks. Um, so um, here I am sitting at a stoplight looking for license plates, it can do a decent job reading them, but I suggest to leave your mic on and if something crazy happens then have it recorded there. Uh, this lady up here almost crashed into the curb. I don't know what she was doing, but I thought that was kind of funny. So day one already stuff, uh, bad stuff's starting to happen. Uh, so here we go <clears throat> with the GoPro test. The GoPro's on the bottom and the Venture dash cam is on the top. As you can tell that the uh, 
Uh, Van True is way more vivid, uh, the saturation's a little bit higher. Uh, here's the same test, GoPro's on the bottom. Uh, the colors in the GoPro are a little bit more washed out, and this is no color correcting whatsoever. This is just the raw video uh, from both cameras. No, you know, no color changing has been done. Um, once again, uh, Van True on top, GoPro on bottom. So, pretty satisfied with these results. So now I'm going to go ahead and play a clip of the actual sound. All right, so here's some actual audio straight off of the Vantru R2 dash cam. Um, you know, I'm sitting here talking, so I quite honestly, I have no idea how it sounds, um, but you can judge for yourself. But like I said, this audio is coming directly from me just talking um, into the dash cam. So hopefully it turns out pretty good. My hopes aren't exactly too high for it, but, um, you know, in the event that you need audio for something, then, you know, you have it, whether someone's yelling at you or whatever the case is, you know, it's just good to have audio so this is what it sounds like all right so as you can tell it doesn't exactly sound the greatest but if you need to read out a license plate or something you can do that and it will definitely pick it up uh, so here's some nighttime clips you know pitch black outside it does a pretty good job cameras absolutely hate nighttime recording and this one does a pretty good job um, as far as license plate reading goes about the same as daytime it doesn't do an extremely good job um, but once again you know if something crazy happens you can just talk to the camera and say you know license plate whatever um, so, you know, it, it can be useful, but, you know, this is a dark road, and, uh, yeah, so if I can go back and do it again, would I get this dash cam? Hell yeah, I would. I think this was a great investment. I'm really excited to use it, and who knows what I'm going to capture using this thing. Oh, uh, you know, once again, um, does a really good job in the daytime, does a pretty darn good job at night, um, for the limited light available. So, um, here's some closing remarks, and I will catch you guys later. Alright guys, so sitting here at my computer, I'm importing the videos right now onto my computer um, and I wanted to go ahead and show off what these files show up uh, like on your computer. So each one of those is like a five minute clip and it comes up with the date and time and everything uh, and what I did to do that was I plugged in my SD card over here, my SD card slot, um, you know, you plug the micro SD into one of these looking things. Um, and then you plug that into where your SD card slot is. So one thing I thought I would mention is that the little um, port where the micro SD card goes into, it's pretty much impossible to get your finger, uh, fingernail or finger in there to pop that thing in and out. So uh, what I've actually had to done the last couple times I did this was I grabbed one of these little you know nail uh, clipper things and I actually used this to help push it in and then uh, kind of jab it in there to pop the uh, micro SD card out uh, because it's just it's physically impossible to stick your fingernail in there. So I mean I guess if you had long fingernails it would work but uh, I was unable to do that so just one thing I wanted to go ahead and show you guys but um, this is about give or take the 25 to 30 minutes of video and uh, it's apparently three gigabytes of footage so uh, if I wanted to you know I could sit here and click on each one of these and watch a five minute clip but uh, I thought it was pretty cool how they you know organize it like this and it's pretty easy to go find like if you remember what date something happened and about what time then you know you can just search through it um, using that right there all right, guys, well, there you go. That is my full review video over the Vantru R2 dash cam. Uh, so would I buy it again? Probably so. I think that it did a really good job. Uh, you know, the colors came out pretty darn well. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, honestly. Uh, adding a 64 gigabyte memory card, that'll hold, give or take, like over nine hours of video. And then once you fill up uh, the SD card, it'll delete the old, delete the old uh, clips and replace it with new stuff. So it just kind of goes like on a cycle. Uh, so you don't have to worry about taking your memory card out and deleting stuff that you don't want. So uh, I'm really happy with this. I'm re really looking forward to learning more about it. This is, you know, day one with the dash cam. I tried to give you guys as much knowledge uh, and first impressions as I possibly could. Uh, the details over all this stuff will be in the description as well if I miss something that I'll add in there. And I'm sure um, I probably will do some type of longevity review with this thing uh, once I really figure out how to fine-tune the details and everything like that. Uh, but so far, pretty happy with that, so I'm going to finish editing this, <coughs> this part of the video, and I will see you all in the next one, so take it easy.